Cubs win. The Cubs win. So the, the Cubs won last night. They're going to the World Series. So, so we celebrate with y'all. Amen. So we're pulling for the club Cubs as well. Amen. A little family. That's what family does, right? Yeah. Amen. So we're excited about uh, the Cubs going to the World Series. Amen. Um, um, in your Bibles, in your Bibles, um, if you do not have your Bible, you can look in your your, um, your iPhone, you know, iPad. If you have an Android, whatever, you have your Bible app. Uh, pull it up. Um, and we'll have most some of the notes, not all the notes will be on the screen behind me. Uh, and regardless, I probably get off my script anyway and just cause confusion in the house. Um, but let's, let's go. In the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy. Right. The book of Deuteronomy. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, the fifth book of the Bible. Bible. You should be in the Old Testament. If you're in the New Testament, you need to come to Bible study. Amen. If you're in the Old Testament and you're lost, it's okay. You know. but, but find it. And when you find the book of Deuteronomy, um, chapter 1, just stand to your feet. Deuteronomy, chapter 1. And, and you'll need uh, a program to take some notes on, uh, some points that may hit you. Deuteronomy, chapter 1 beginning at verse 29. Then I said to you, y'all see that? Amen. Verse 29? Yeah. Then I said to you, do not be terrified or afraid of them. We could just preach that alone right there. Yeah, right there. Verse 30. The Lord your God who goes before you will fight for you according to all he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. In the wilderness, and in the wilderness, where you saw how the Lord your God carried you, as a man carries his son. So all this time I thought I was carrying myself. And all the way that you went until you came to this place. Yet, for all that, you did not believe the Lord your God, who went in the way before you to search out a place for you to pitch your tents to show you the way you should go, in the fire by night, and the cloud by day. You see that? Yeah. I want to talk just for a brief moment, really brief. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of God. When I was at Macedonia Baptist Church, 963 Southwest 40th Street, on the west side of San Diego, Texas, yes. uh, 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 during our Sunday school hour, Deacon uh, Easter would uh, pull out those old blue uh, hymn books and, and say, turn the hymn number so and so. And we were going to sing, Standing on the Promises yeah. of God. Stand on the promises of God. Stand on the promises of Christ, my King. Through eternal ages, let his praises reign. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Then we'll turn that corner and go to the chorus. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of God. Um, in God's holy word, he has promises for you. He has promises for me. But it's essential that we stand on those promises and trust in those promises, believe in those promises. In order to stand, trust, believe, and understand those promises, you have to know those promises. Because what you don't know can't hurt you. What you don't know can't hurt you. In this text, this particular text, the grand, um, the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy is a, 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 a very interesting book. I, I, I've come to love it. I, I, I read it in my quiet time. And when I'm studying, it's amazing how often it, uh, the Bible refers back to the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, a beautiful, beautiful book. It's a beautiful book, and it's recorded and been uh, accredited to Moses 
as writing down as what God has inspired him to say. Um, it is known as uh, uh, the uh, completion of the law. It's a it's a, 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 a rewrite of the first four books of the Bible. The first five books of the Bible, as we know from Bible study, is a Pentateuch. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and then Deuteronomy uh, is the fifth book of the Bible. And it gives an overview of the first four, and the Pentateuch is also referred to as the law, the law. Sometimes you hear it referred to as the Mosaic law. The Mosaic Law. It's the law. It refers to the law, and it's and it's repeating things that took place All right. in the first four books. It's repeating things that took place in the first four, four books. Can I walk and just teach this oh, for a while? Oh, yeah. So, 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 this so, page. What, what it's doing is it's saying, now I told you this over here. Let me tell you again. Yeah. I told you that, so let me tell you again. Yeah. Let me remind you. And then it also is kind of painful at times because it reminds the children of Israel of the things they did wrong while they were going to the promised land. Right. And it reminds them of this. It reminds them of the fact that, you know, listen, when you came out of bondage, when you came out of bondage, God delivered you. Right. You know, you cried out and said, save us. He saved us. He delivered them out of the bondage and brought them to the Red Sea, opened up the Red Sea. And, 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 and when you got out there, you know, he fed you with manna. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Bible says it was called manna. Just, just bread just fell from, from, from out of the sky. You know, didn't understand it. They had never seen it before. And it, it was called manna. So he's, manna actually means in the Hebrew, what is it? Yeah. Right. So they, when it fell from the sky, they, they, they picked it up, they looked at it and said, what is it? Yeah. You know, he provided for them. What is it? They had no clue about that. He provided manna from on high. Then, then as they were eating the manna, they began to complain. Uh -huh. The Bible says they began to, to complain about the manna that they were eating. Uh, they didn't like it. They said, you know, listen, um, <laughs> they, they began to complain about what they were eating. They didn't like it. I, it just came to me. I was reminded of, of, of something that, that happened uh, in, my, uh, in my childhood. Uh, my mother uh, specialized in the morning on cooking a certain breakfast. She would always cook, you know, grits, eggs. Y'all eat before y'all came, right? <laughs> grits, eggs, bacon, and biscuits. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good breakfast, you know. And, and she would make that uh, uh, on a regular. Matter of fact, she made it almost every morning. Every woman. And then, then my brother and I uh, uh, thought we would be smart and we would leave a note before we went to bed. Please make something else. <laughs> okay. Yeah, listen. And so we left that note for my mother to make something else. And of course, did you, we woke up in the morning and there was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> now at this time, at this time, my uncle was busy and staying with us, and he was really upset with us <laughs> because of our complaint uh -huh. that we made. The children of Israel began to complain about having manna every day. They said they wanted some meat yeah, yeah. to eat. The Bible says they said they wanted some meat to eat. You know, listen, you can't really appreciate it until it's gone. Do I need to just pull over right there? I mean, you can't appreciate. Uh, your back until your back goes out. So they're complaining about having manna, and they're complaining about having manna, so, so they, they complained and, and God gave them quail to eat. The Bible says he fed them with quail. Quail so high that they, as far as they could see it was quail, as far as my, they had so much quail that they ate it and they got sick from it. The Bible says they ate the quail so much that it started to come out their nostrils. Uh -huh. Now here's what it was important. Now listen, and the and the ones who complained about the matter and ate the quail were the ones who died. So 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 Moses in his book of Deuteronomy begins to give them an overview of what happened in the past. You complain about some stuff, you know. He started to tell you this what happened, this what happened, this. And but yet it's a very affectionate letter that he's writing because Moses has been informed that he is not going to enter into the promised land. All right. <sighs> Can you imagine? Let's just pull over there because that's not part of my text. But can you imagine that that Moses has has led the children of Israel for forty years 
I mean, he, 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 he was a pastor of the Children of Israel Church, I mean, and he had some grumbling, complaining folk yeah. in the congregation. Yeah. But he stuck with it. He cried out to God on their behalf. He begged God to spare their life. And then God said, but Moses, but you're not going to enter it. Hmm. That's got to be a tough one. Yeah. But, 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 but God, God wasn't so harsh when he said, even though you're not going to enter it, I'm going to let you see it. Yeah. So, so Moses had the privilege of seeing the, the promise. Let me tell you, the beautiful thing about this in the text, and you got to remember this, I don't care what you're going through in life, you know, even if it does not work out for you, like you would have wanted to work out for you, you know what, he's already promised you eternity. Yeah, yeah. And what could be better than eternity? Right. The Bible says that. So we find in this book of Deuteronomy, the children of Israel uh, are going to the promised land and, and Moses begins to give his farewell speech and he says you know listen when you enter into the promised land you got to remember this you got to remember that don't do this don't do that don't do this so so Moses stands with the children of Israel I need to paint this picture for you so you can see it real good Don they've been traveling in the wilderness for all this time, for some 40 years, and now it's time to enter into the promised land. Yeah. They're not in the promised land, but they're about to enter into the promised land. And so Moses it stands to bridge a gap between where you've been and where you're going. All right. You know, it's important, Tracy, to, to remember where you've been yeah. before where you go. Because you, you can take care of some problems where you're going if you remember where you've been. Yeah. Hmm? Right. So, so, so you've been wandering in this wilderness for all this time. And you're about to enter into the promised land. You've got to be careful that you'll make some crucial mistakes. So he's talking about bridging the gap. He's saying that, you know, when you were out in the wilderness, that was a temporary situation. I'm about to take you to a permanent home. Yeah. You've been renting and now you're going to go to owning. Can I, can, I, can I keep going with this thing? Yeah, yeah, because, because the truth is, we, we handle rental property different than we handle our home. Yeah. Yeah. If, 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 you, if you don't believe me, you know that rental car that you got into? Boy, you, I, mean, I want to see if you're going to take a speed bump at 50 miles an hour. <laughs> you know, yeah, but, 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 but when it's your home, yeah. we're going to slow down, yeah. take it down to 5 miles an hour. Yeah. So, 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 so he said, listen, you're about to go into something that you're going to own it could be different than how you handle things that you have written in the past. So he's bridging the gap. Now listen, also, as he's talking to him, he says, like, some of them old habits you had over here, yeah. they're not going to work in the promised land. All right. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're going to leave some of them old habits back. Some of that grumbling and complaining over here, you're going to leave that back over here. Yeah. Some of that, that inability to be thankful wow. in the past, you're going to yeah. yeah. You're going to leave that behind. So, 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 so they're going to the, the promised land, the promised land. Now listen, now let me dig with this for a little while, then we're going to press my point. Listen. The promised land is Canaan, where they're going. Yeah. However, Don, the promised land actually represents not a physical address, but it actually represents a position. So God promises to put you in a particular position. I see. And you need to dig because you'll understand it a whole lot better if you just wrap your mind around the thought that, that, that there are some promises that God has made for you. What he's saying is, I promise to put you in a position for opportunity. All right. So if you look at the scripture and dig through it deeply, you'll find that that's what's happening. He promised to put you in a position uh, of opportunity. The position of opportunity. The promised land is a position of opportunity. Go to Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. God places us in promising positions. Positions of opportunity. Exodus chapter 3, verse 8. This is when they're leaving the uh, uh, bondage. They're exiting in Exodus chapter 3, verse 8. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from 
from the, that land to a what? To a good and large land. A land flowing with milk and honey to the place of Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Pezzites, Hevites, and Jebusites. You see that? Yes. Yeah. So listen. He places you in a good opportunity and it's a large opportunity. He positions you. So the promise that he tells you is, I promise you to put you in a good position. All right. To put you in a, in, in, in a large opportunity. When he talks about good, it says to a land that's good and large. Y'all see that in the text? Uh -huh. We talk about good, we talk about the quality. Everything that you need to succeed will be in the opportunity that he puts you yeah. into. Yeah. So he's gonna place you in an opportunity, in a position to succeed. Yeah. Now, 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 now listen, not only that, Large means in quantity. The opportunity will stretch wide, so there's plenty of room uh -huh. for diverse opportunity. There's plenty of room for success. The opportunity is large and it's beyond my imagination. Listen, it's so large that, that, that when you think about it, he'll say, bigger. Yeah. No, 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 you, you think it's too small. Think bigger. Yeah. You think, no, 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 listen. You know, I know you don't see it right now, but he's saying think bigger. You know, you, you, know, you, you, know, you, you see your business with just one or two chairs. He's saying, no, think bigger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, see, you see a business just this, no, think bigger. No, you, no, you, you need to think. He's going to put you in the position for the opportunity. Now, listen, listen, listen. However, although the opportunity is promised, it is my responsibility to take it, keep it, and grow it. My Oh, Jesus. Just because you are in the position, he places you in the position, doesn't mean it's going to automatically happen. I see. Because you will find in the text later on that, 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 that God told them when they got to the promised land, you know, you need to go over there, you know, listen, and you need to multiply. So the possibility that you may not multiply. Mm -hmm. You may not grow. So, so in order to make it happen, you got to remember that you have to take it, yeah. you got to keep it, and you gotta grow it. The opportunity, however, also comes with obstacles. The promise is that puts you in a position. However, the position will also come with obstacles. Look at what he says in Exodus chapter three, verse eight still. So I come down to deliver you into the land, uh, them out of the land, out of the hand of the Egyptians, to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to a place of the, wait a minute, Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Parasites, Hevites, and Jebusites. Mm -hmm. The Texas and <laughs> the indication, Sister Graham, that, that you mean to tell me you're going to give me a land that's already occupied? <laughs> well, it, you, know, you, you would think that, you know, you, you would think that you give me a place where, you know, I don't have to work for it. It's going to be open. I walk in. You know, because we see, we buy into the concept, if God is in it, I don't have to do any work. It's just going to happen. Oh, <laughs> let, 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 me, let me help you. Let me put it. Put, you listen. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way all the time. What he says is, you know, I may put you in a position. But you're going to have to fight yourself, too. Yeah, yeah. Listen, listen. So there'll be obstacles. The land has residents living there. First thing I want you to see. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 29. The first thing. Then I said to you, do not. First one is just do not. Do not. Deuteronomy is full of do not, do not, do not do this, do not do that, do not, you know, and, and you got to imagine, I have to share this and, and, and many of y'all can get with me on this one, you know, because I, I was raised on the west side of San Antonio, Texas, uh, my, uh, uh, when we went everyone out someplace, my mother would uh, put us in the car, uh, father put us in the car, and, and we'd go like maybe to the mall or whatever. You know, that the, the big mall that just opened up was Windsor Park Mall in San Antonio. I'll never forget. And we go out to the mall, or whatever. And, uh, and, and Brother Gibson, she would uh, get us in the car, and when we get to the mall, 
right before we get the car. You know, you got that speech. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> listen, 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 listen. When you get in there, don't do, don't you touch nothing. Don't ask for nothing. Don't put your hands on nothing. Yeah, listen, 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 listen. And, and, and the speech was just like just so, so embedded into me, Stu, that you know, by the time she gave me that speech, we really didn't want to get. We we'll just wait to call. You know, you know, you know, because it, and, and then you know, it, it was that same speech. You want to somebody's house? Don't you ask for nothing. If they ask you, if you hungry, I don't care if your stomach is growling. You better not say. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you ask for nothing? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 thank you. I, I, I'm not hungry. <laughs> no, no, Don't you say a word? Yeah. That, so, so, so Moses is saying, you know, you know, do not. But you know what? And, and in this text, it's a bunch of do nots. Now here, and you got to get this one. Listen, it took me almost 50 years to realize that when God says, do not, what he's really saying is, do not hurt yourself. All right. Because if you do this, you're just going to hurt yourself. But thou, not, thou shalt not, thou, it's really not about keeping me from something. Right. It's really to keep me for something. Can, 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 yeah. so, 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 so when he's saying do not, he's saying do not hurt yourself. Do not do this. Because if you do this, you're going to mess yourself up. You're going you're gonna to mess the blessing up if you do this. If you do that, you know, that's what the do nots are about. So, so, so God through Moses gives us specific do nots. But here's something that's interesting though. Walk with me just a second. All right. The text says, he says, then I said to you, do not be terrified or afraid of them. Hmm. Why is it that the text separates these two things? Because right. couldn't he just say, just don't be afraid? But he said, no, do not be a terror, do not be terrified, and do not be afraid. See, when you're terrified, you're focusing on the circumstance, the situation, or the people. So he's saying, do not be afraid of them. Do not be afraid of the circumstance. Do not be afraid of, of the people that are. Do not be afraid of what, 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 who they are. You know, don't walk in the room and start shaking your boots because they're more educated than you are. Because they don't look like you. Yeah. Do not be. Do not be afraid. Don't, don't let. Don't be afraid of, of, of the people or circumstances. However, but do not be afraid. Would line up more with the word fear. Do not fear them. And fear. Fear acronym. Future events already realized. So, 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 so when when we are afraid, it's more so we start to focus on the outcome. Yes. You know, you, you start. You know, you know, when I'm terrified, I'm terrified of the individual, the person. But however, when I'm afraid, what it means is that I'm focusing on the outcome of what's going to happen. What's going to happen? Fear then has this great tendency. It has this great tendency, Tracy, to make us over-exaggerate the situation. Because when I become fearful, when I become afraid, I start looking at what, what could happen, and then I become uh, afraid of the, the situation about how bad it could be. And then how bad it could be paralyzing. Go to Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. Verse 32. This is after Moses sent out spies to check out the land. All right. And they came back with a report. In verse 32. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out. The prophecy. The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. I mean, it's some big Negroes over there. <laughs> I mean, he's, I mean, I mean, you know, you know, I mean, you know it, it, I mean, the, the report came back like, you know, listen, there we saw the giants. Yeah. 
I mean, just, I mean, you know, because they were afraid, they started exaggerating what they saw. They were giants. They were descendants of the Anix that came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, listen, they, I, mean, I mean, this is how big they were. They were this big and we were. Yeah, yeah. Really, were they really that big? <laughs> But, but when you're afraid and you start thinking about the outcome, you start saying, man, they were huge. <laughs> now, you, 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 remember, you, listen. you know when you're growing up, you had that, that, that bully in the neighborhood when you're growing up, you know, uh, and man, he was huge. I mean, I mean, I remember, I remember, you know, Daryl Bethlehem was probably about maybe six foot ten. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's just bad. Then you, you go back home for the homecoming after you grew up a little bit, and you look at him eye to eye. <laughs> <laughs> then he shrank off. Then I see something different. Yeah. <laughs> you know, listen, listen. Fear will make you exaggerate the situation. And that's what's yeah. happening here. They were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and we were uh, in their sight. So we saw them as grasshoppers, and they saw us as grasshoppers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on now. You know, so, so, so fear causes them to, to exaggerate. And we know 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. He gives us supernatural power, supernatural love, supernatural thinking. So the spirit of fear robs us of power, robs us of love, and robs us of sound thinking. Yeah. Do not be afraid. Do not be terrified. Because if you do, you will surely hurt yourself and not reap the blessings of the promise. Let me tell you, whenever God is taking you into something and moving you to a, a direction, he's trying to get you to a promised land and give you the promise. My brothers and sisters, let me, let, let me share with you right now. This fear cannot be a part of the equation. All right. When, when, when you start having the, fear, the language of fear, you got a problem. I don't know if it's going to work out. Mm. You know, you know. I don't know if I can do this. Well, I know you can. He can. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, let's, you know, we, no. Every start having that, that fear because fear then allows doubt to sink in. Yeah. And, and, and listen. And then when you become fearful, you're sure to drown, man. Because let me tell you, when I become fearful, when I become fearful, I start thinking of other plans. Mm. Help me, Lord Jesus. Mm. Okay, you know, you know, you know, listen, well, if it doesn't work out, this is what I'll do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Help and then as I think about the other plan, then that means I'm taking away from the original plan. Yeah. I'm trusting God. <laughs> so, 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 do not. The second thing is focus on the promises of God. Focus on the promises of God. Verse 30 says, the Lord your God who goes before you will fight for you according to all he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. And in the wilderness where you saw him, the Lord your God carried you as a man carries his son in all the way that you went until you came to this place. How do I combat my fear? I focus. Focus is the key. Stop focusing on your problem. Start focusing on the promises. Start focusing on the promises. Okay? And don't, 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 don't get me wrong. Yeah, listen. I'm not trying to, to tell anybody that, that those problems are not real. But we serve a God of promises. Yeah. And what I want to encourage us to do is to focus on on the promises and stop focusing on the problems. Problems, and in this text we find three facts uh, um, to the uh, to focus on. The first fact is God has gone before you. Now think about that. Think about that. Yeah, listen. Whatever your problem is, it may have caught you off God uh, off guard, but it didn't catch God off guard. Yeah. He's already gone before you. He's already gone before you. Um, he's already pricked the heart of your manager. Yeah, yeah. He said, yo, listen, listen. 
You're going into the interview and, 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 and you're shaking, but he's already gone before you. Wow. Yes. Yeah. You know, listen, you need this, this, this contract, this deal to work out. He's already gone. Yeah. Yeah. Before you, you, you know, listen, he's already gone before you got it set up, got the people, you know, listen, that, that, that person that couldn't stand you called in sick that day. Yeah. He's already gone. Before, yeah. before you. Listen, 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 that, that, that's first. Then yeah, listen, listen. He's already gone before you. He's already uh, picked the right doctor for your case. You know, it's always amazing how, 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 how Christian folk come and tell me. This is a great testimony to say. You know what? I went to the doctor, and you know, listen, listen. And, and the best cancer doctor on duty was there that day. You know why? Because he's already gone before you. You know, you know, you know listen. I went in there and they said, listen, man, I wish I could get you into this doctor, this eye specialist. You know, he specializes in this, but he's not taking any new patients right now. However, he going to take you. Yeah. You know why? He already gone before you. That's first. The other fact is, when you get there, he will fight for you. Mm. Listen, when you get there, you know, listen, he will fight for you. I got to press my point. Let me, let me move this fast. The third thing he, he, he does, while you're going through, remember what he did in the past. Yeah, exactly. mm. the, Bible says, the, the Bible says, he told him, said, listen, listen, I'm a, he's going to go before you. Listen, and also remember what he did in the past. You, you do remember when y'all were in bondage, don't you? You do remember when you cried out to him, don't you? You do remember how he led you and then Pharaoh's army was behind you and then the Red Sea was in front of you. You do remember how he parted the Red Sea, don't you? Yeah, yeah. You do remember how when you got across on dry land, you looked back and, and Pharaoh's army was drowning. Yeah, yeah. You do remember that, don't you? Yeah. Is it, it, you remember how you got hungry? You know, you took only enough food for three days, but you was out there 40 years and you, and you got hungry. He fed you with manna from all high. You do remember that, don't you? Yeah. You do remember the fact that your clothes never wore out. Your feet never swelled up on you while you were walking all these 40 years. You do remember that, don't you? Yeah. You, you do remember that, don't you? He says, what you got to do is remember what he did. Then listen, listen. Then he, then he says, do you do remember that folk had counted you out, right? Uh -huh. Folks said it wasn't going to work out. Folks laughed at you, said it wouldn't happen. But if it had not been <laughs> for the Lord, who was on your side, if it had not been, you... Listen, 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 see, you, you, you do remember the fact that when you lost your job, you didn't lose no weight. Yeah, right. <laughs> Help me, Lord Jesus. That's a good place to say amen right there. Yeah. You know, the money wasn't coming in like you thought it was, but, but, you know, but the refrigerator stayed full somehow. Yeah. He made a way. Yeah. Yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, a great picture. I don't know if we have uh, on, on the screen. Uh, there's a great picture. Alex Haley, uh, 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 the author of Roots, he has a, uh, uh, in his office, he has a poster. And it has a, on that poster, it has a turtle that's on top of a fence post. And it says underneath there, he didn't get there by himself. <laughs> Listen, you need to always be reminded that he's got you where you are and you didn't get there by yourself. <laughs> by yourself. That's right. You always got to be reminded that, 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 that you didn't get there. Like, and, then, and the poster also can remind us that, you know, listen, when you see a turtle on top of a, a fence post, you're like, how did it get there? You know what? All things are possible. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that he's yeah. able yeah. to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or even think to ask. So, 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 so those things are there to remind us. Go to Psalms chapter 34, verse 3, real quick, and I'm going to press this point, then we're going to finish up. Psalms 34, verse 3. This is one of those that you need to have highlighted in your Bible. Verse 3 says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, yeah. and let us exalt his name together. Yeah. Together. When, listen, when I stop focusing on my problem and start focusing on the promises, I begin to still talk to, I begin to talk to my problems in a different way. See, listen, what happens is, when you're focusing on your problem, you're constantly telling God about your problems. But you know, when you focus on the promises, you start telling your problems about your God. Yeah. 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 So, you, so you walk in and you tell cancer, you say, hey, cancer, hey, listen here, this God that I have yeah. uh, gave sight to the blind. Yeah. 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 Healed a, a, a lady with a disease for 12 years. This is about the God I'm talking. You know, he raised the dead. I mean, you know, he made the lame to talk. That's what I'm going to tell my cancer about. Yeah. You know, we got to go in with a different mentality. I talked to my five 
my dad said, say, my God has supplied every one of my days. As a matter of fact, 5,000 folk got hungry one day, and he fed it with two fish and five body loads, not including the women and children. I just got to talk to my problem like that. Yeah. Stop telling God how big your problem is. Stop telling your problem how big your God is. Yeah. Yeah. God promises to lead you. I'm going to go this, this real fast. Look at verse 32 of our text, Deuteronomy chapter 1. Yet for all that you did not believe the Lord your God, even after I did all this and got you this far, you still didn't believe. Who went in the way before you to search out a place for you to pitch your tent hmm. to show you the way you should go in the fire by night and in the cloud by day. Listen. First thing is this. While you were struggling, yeah. going through the wilderness, I search out a place for you to pitch your tent. Now, that, that's, now listen. That, 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 you better you wrap your mind around this because this is deep here. What he's saying is, while you were struggling, while you were going through the wilderness, while you were lost out there, while you were trying to figure it out, you couldn't find your way, you know, while you were crying at night, talking about, oh Lord, this is going to be the one that takes me out, you know, he says, I found a place for you to pitch your tent. What it means is, I found a place for you to rest. Yeah. Now, now, now this is deep here, because listen, what, what the text is trying to tell us, tell us here, Brother Gibson, is the fact that, that even while you're struggling, have you ever been in those positions where, you know, everything seems like it's falling apart? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it ain't one thing, it's another. And you said, Lord, if I could just catch a break. And he says, I'm going to give you a break. Wow. And I, I don't know where a phone call will come. He'll just encourage you. <laughs> when you, when you it, it, the indication is that when you're going through and when you're traveling and when you're struggling, he's going to set out a place and search out a place for you to, you know, this is a good place for you to rest. Just catch your breath now. Because you think sometimes you're like, if I can just have a moment to get my feet back under me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the text is indicating that he will give you an opportunity to get your feet back on you. And the second thing it says, then not only that he told you that he'll, he would uh, tell you where to pitch your tent, but then he would also tell you when it was time to move and which way to go. Which way it would be to go. In verse, verse 32 there, is, uh, well, verse 33, who went in the way before you to search out a place for you to pitch your tent to show you the which way to go. He will also lead you, yeah. guide you. You know, Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my pathway. Listen, but here's the deal. Yeah, that's good enough. The text says that he will lead you. Nah, but, but but he gives you the baby face illustration. I only think about you on two occasions. <laughs> <laughs> That's both day and night. Listen, 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 listen. So, so that covers it all, right? So, so the text says that, 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 that y'all need to change from Magic 102 sometime. Come on. <laughs> so, 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 the, so the text says, the text says that, 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 that he led you by day and by by night. So the indication here is that, that he led you when you thought you could see your way. And he also led you at night when you could not see your way. Because you hear the, 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 the dangerous part of this really is, is the fact that when, 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 when it's daytime, when I think I can see my way, that's the time I hurt myself. Because I think I know what's better. But he said, no, I'm going to lead you even when you think you can see your way. Yeah. Yeah. Then the pillar of night then says, and, listen, and when it gets dark, when your back gets against the wall, and you can't see your way, I'm going to lead you in also. Yeah. 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 Listen, listen. So, are so you willing to, to stand on the promises of God? The beautiful thing I love about this text is when. When the text came back and said, Do not be terrified. The Lord your God will go and fight for you. Verse 31, In the wilderness saw, where you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a man carries his son in all the way you went until you came to this place. 
The reality of it is, God's promises have been keeping me. Yeah. God's promises have been keeping you. Are you willing to stand on God's promises? Even when it gets rough, even when the night gets the darkest, even when, when you think you know what you're doing, even when you think you can see your way, are you willing to, to trust it? Are you willing to trust it? Listen, I did like this. Um, life has taught me when you have children that you cannot raise your children the same way. If you have two children, you can't raise them the exact same way. If you have three children, you cannot raise them. You know, they're individuals. And, and one of my children, which will bring names, one of my children, you know, that, you know, one of them, you could, you could, you could, you could yell at them and put a little something on their backside. End the story. You know, they got it right. The other one, you know, you yell at them, tell them, you know, sit your narrow behind. You know, you know like you talk to your teeth. You know, sit your narrow behind now, right now. You know, you know, you know. I just had a flashback. I saw my mama. <laughs> but, 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 you know, but, but you, know, you could do that. Or you, could, you could spank her and, and she look at you like, that hurt. <laughs> Like, you know, yeah, exactly. You know, like, you know, like, uh, however, 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 if you were to put her in time out, Lord Jesus, she would lose her mind up in it. I mean, she go holler, wake the neighbors up, you know. You gotta hope the cops ain't riding down the street at the time, because you know, she gonna holler forever and ever and ever, you know, you know. So so once we messed that, we knew she didn't like that, you know, if you want to get her attention. We'll get in that chair, or, or, or I sit on the sofa somewhere, and I, oh Lord, ooh, Jesus. Jesus, let me tell you. That's it. Nah. Now, there was this one particular time I remember. Uh, my parents were in town, and, uh, and, and she had gotten in trouble. And, uh, and my dad, you know, watched me get on her, and I said, sit down, and I put over that, 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 that sofa. And she just hollered and he, oh, let up, let the girl up, let the girl up. You know what I'm talking about? I said, Dad, no, I'm not right now. Not right now. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and I got a parent right now, Dad. So, 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 so she, she hollered and carried on. And, I, and so we just, we, we're used to it. So we just go about our business. We walk around like, like we're over here. You know, and, and it, it's tearing his heart up, you know. And so, so I'm in the other room, and after a while, I, 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 she stopped crying. And so, so, I get up and I look over there. I come back in the room and he's in over there on the sofa with her. And then I'm open and fell asleep. The text is tailored to teach us that, that there'll be times when God will not necessarily pull you out of your struggle, yeah, yeah. but he'll get in there with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he'll hold you yeah. and rock you. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. So, 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 my brother, and sisters, let me tell you. He will not always pull you up. Because the text says, how about this? Yea, though I walk yes. through the valley yes. and the shadows of death, thou yeah. art with me. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. And I'm going to come there. He said, he's going to comfort me, too. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. So, you got to understand that. that in his promises. His promises will come and hold you. Yeah. Even when you find yourself struggling, uh -huh. you can stand on every one of his promises. Yeah. What do you do? When you've done all you can, yeah. you just stand. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed.